rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd wa habit fillah from the traits of the hypocrites that we want to do everything possible within our power to avoid is that they are obstinate and rebellious and arrogant in remaining upon ignorance and deviance and sinfulness. And this is a trait of the fasiqun and a trait of the munafiqun, meaning the hypocrites and the wicked evildoers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, to his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran in Surah Al-Munafiqun, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, in Kitab Al-Kareem, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالُوا يَسْتَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ لَوَا رَعُوسُهُمْ وَرَعَيْتُهُمْ يَصَدُّونَ وَهُمْ مُسْتَقْبِرُونَ سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَسْتَغْفَرْتَ لَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تَسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ لَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمِ الْفَاسِقِينَ قَوْمِ الْفَاسِقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكِرِيمِ Just in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He says, and if you, and if it is said to them, وِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ And if, and, and, and if you say to them, تَعَالُوا يَسْتَغْفِرْ لُكُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Come, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will seek forgiveness for you. That they, you know, they move their heads, their heads, they move their heads in such a way that they are ridiculing and that they, uh, you know, they turn away in, in, in ridicule. And in order to, to close off the path of guidance, you know, they do this to ridicule instead of accepting this guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and instead they do this with arrogance out of kibir, out of arrogance and regardless of whether you sought forgiveness for them or you didn't seek forgiveness for them Allah will not forgive them verily Allah does not guide a wicked people so this shows us, Ahabat Tifilah, when people have gone to the level that they have such a level of hypocrisy and such a deep level of sinfulness and wickedness that unless Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala guides them, there's no guidance for them. If Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, whomsoever Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala guides, then He is guided and whomsoever Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala leaves astray, then they are not guided. They cannot be guided. And this shows, this is the status, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah, of those people whose hearts are sealed. Their hearts are sealed. That verily their hearts are sealed. Their hearts are sealed. In their heart is a marad that they have a sickness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases that sickness in their hearts. Why? Out of injustice? No. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is al-adl. But He knows that they will refuse guidance. He knows that those are the hypocrites, the people who say on their tongue that they believe in Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and they believe in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they believe in the pillars of Islam and the pillars of Iman. But in their heart, they don't. They detest it, perhaps. Perhaps they hate it. Perhaps they are jesus. They are spies even on the religion of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. So it's very important to realize that some people, and we don't want to have those traits, that they are arrogant towards guidance. And this is the lesson that we want to look at because we don't have the ability to determine if someone is necessarily a hypocrite or not. We only see the signs of hypocrisy, but we should not go around making, saying so-and-so is a hypocrite, this one is a hypocrite. La. This is not the maqsid here. This is not the purpose of mentioning this ayat in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But rather it's to show us that those traits of the hypocrites are traits that we can find in ourselves that we have to be careful of. And that is the trait of sinfulness. 
and it actually made me think being back here in America for this short period of time, as we find sinfulness everywhere, regardless of where we are, whether I'm in Saudi Arabia, whether I'm here, but what you see here is because there isn't any Muslim authority and so on, you see open sins much easier. You see the people are much uh, more inclined towards sinfulness and being open in their sin. For example, in this I'm reflecting after going to the Eid prayer, after seeing the way the women dressed and were undressed and the way of some of the behaviors that we witness and may Allah forgive us all and may Allah guide us all but this is a sign of a weakness in our community when a man will walk with his woman and his woman will be practically naked there to turn all the heads of the other men that that's not that's not befitting conduct of a Muslim okay and could you advise a person like this Perhaps, but often when you, what we find in many situations like this is they become arrogant. The woman will become arrogant. <laughs> it's none of your business what I wear. You shouldn't be looking. Uh, this and this and this. They'll come up with a million excuses to be disobedient to the book of Allah and disobedient to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah And a lot of time it's out of arrogance. It's out of pride. It's out of kibber. They love the, the perfume from a distance. Perfume. Uh, travel through the air this is impermissible but yet the people wear it they know the rulings they know that they shouldn't be wearing makeup or their parents and those who were responsible for them didn't articulate the message of the book in the Sunnah and so what I want to mention and this is for another time we'll sit and talk about this is the importance of tarbiya of educating ourselves and educating our children about the importance of Islam the importance of Islam that it's not simply that your children learn especially we find some of the communities emphasize memorizing the Quran which is khair azim but then their children are doing every other kind of sin the, and the parents are suffice oh so when my children went to the duksaga that's enough but that's not sufficient they need to know and have love uh, and understanding and to be raised and to be comforted by the adults uh, and, and be able to communicate with the adults to be able to continue to practice. That we have a lot of work to do as Islamic communities and Islamic minorities throughout the world. In fact, you will find this even in the Muslim lands that the Muslim youth are in great danger and in great need of tarbiyah. So we want to be careful and be cautious and have our hearts open to guidance when someone advises us with something good that we accept that good. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.